Hey guys, Chris Haskins with the realestateroundup.com and I'm so excited to be able to share this information with you today. I have honestly learned it from some giants, some giant real estate investors that have moved on to the afterlife and I've just been blessed to be able to have met them. They gave me the information so I can pass it on to you. Here we are touching each other at this moment in time in the universe on this planet. I'm so blessed to be able to share this knowledge with you and to show you how to raise money to fund your next real estate deals. I've got some checks here. I'm gonna show you these two checks real quick to show you how we just closed two loans and using no credit checks, no tax, didn't have to turn in any tax returns, didn't have to turn in any type of bank statements, didn't have to even do a loan application. And we're not even making any payments on this. Now the first loan I'm gonna show you, we just closed it out. It was, and this is not my money. This is money we're gonna use on projects, guys. And this here, we got one there. It's 60, what is this? This is 34,000 we got. And then we've got our second one here is $69,000. So I just wanna show you how you can raise money to buy your next real estate transaction, guys. Today's topic is hard money versus private money. Hard money versus private money for real estate investors. Which one is better, which one is worse? I'm gonna give you one, two, three, four, five, six, six points, pros and cons for hard money and some one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pros and cons for using private money. First of all, what is hard money and what is private money? Before, but before I get to that, I just wanna challenge you to be fully engaged in your life. I was looking at a video the other day and the speaker said that how many of us are just fully engaged in our electronic devices every day? And I wanna challenge you just to at least take one step to break that connection with your electronic device and don't sleep with it in the bedroom. Cause some of the stuff I'm gonna teach you is gonna be impossible for you to actually do if you're fully engaged in your phone. Private money is gonna be the way. Private money changed my life, changed my investing life. And the only way that I was able to do it is by not to be engaged. After, well, I have to be fully engaged talking to people and not be engaged with my phone throughout my community, throughout my travels when I'm going to get gas or going out to eat. I'm fully engaged in my atmosphere meeting people. Private money has really changed my life. So I just want to challenge you to, to back off of the cell phones a little bit and be you know, you never see, life is nothing but a battle. We're all battling to be the best, battling to be the best health, make the most money, be the best parent, be the best spouse. Life is nothing but a battle and you never see major decisions made on the battlefield. You always see the major crucial or critical decisions being made off the battlefield, in the office, between the generals, where it's very quiet. They've got all the information right in front of, right in front of them and that's where the crucial the decisions are made. So the only way for you to make these crucial decisions is if you are fully engaged in life and getting off of those electronic devices. They will steal your time away, they will steal your willpower, and they will steal your engagement. So don't be engaged in electronic devices at all times. Take a step back and enjoy life. Talk to somebody, create some personal deep relationships with people because that's the spice of life. Okay, enough of my philosophy for today. So let's get right into it. Hard money versus private money. Hard money versus private money. This is what real estate investors use to acquire in the sports and the game of acquisition and finance of real estate. Hard money, let's talk about hard money, the pros and cons. And before I get into the details, I am an advocate of private money. I have used hard money from time to time, but private money is where I want you to be. Okay, on the left side, we've got hard money here. What is hard money? It is a lender that is going to lend you money based on the asset and not necessarily your ability to pay it back. That is what hard money is going to be in a nutshell. I'm paraphrasing. So it's asset based. What does that mean? They don't necessarily care about your credit or your tax returns or your income or your bank statements and stuff like that. So they're gonna lend you based on the value, based on the value of the asset you are, re you are acquiring. So the house, let's, let's say it's a house worth $200,000. If you're getting it at $100,000 and it needs 
$40,000 in repair, they're going to lend you $140,000 based on the value of that asset being at $200,000. So if you screw up or you mess up, they can what? Come back and take the asset back to liquidate their money. So that's hard money is how that works. It's based on the asset and not necessarily your ability to pay it back. Next, hard money, hard money is usually short term. In my area, it's gonna be six months. Sometimes you can get an extension for another three months or maybe another six months for a year. But generally, hard money is going to be short term. Uh, I don't know why they do that, but that's usually how most hard money lenders do. They want their money to go out, come back very quickly with that high return. So that's gonna be a drawback of hard money. Now, hard, uh, the third thing with hard money is you're gonna to have to make monthly payments. Unless you roll in six months of payments into the loan, you are required to make your monthly payment every month. So that is another issue because we wanna have a, as little outgo as possible in this business because any month you can end up having, having an extra $10,000 expense in the real estate business that can really strap you for that particular month. So you have monthly payments going out to pay your loans or your hard money loans. Hard money will require a down payment. Most hard money lenders, all the ones that I've seen, they want you to have what they call skin in the game. Hard money lenders want the borrower to be confident enough for them to put up their own money. So let's just say you're borrowing, on our first example, you're borrowing $140,000. They will probably require you to put down at least 10%. So you're gonna to come to the closing table with $14,000 plus closing costs. $14,000 plus closing costs if you're using hard money. What? Okay, next is gonna be high interest and points. High interest, I know you know what interest is, but what are points? Points are 1% of a loan. Points are 1% of your loan. So in our, uh, let's use our same example. If you're borrowing $140,000, one point is going to be $1,400. And typically, a typical hard money lender is going to ch charge you anywhere between three and five points. I remember t 10 years ago, they, the, the standard was five points so on a $140,000 loan, you've got 1,400 times five. You have to bring that at closing. And interest rates 10 years ago was 15%. I have seen them go down some. I have seen loans right around 10% now, maybe nine, 11% perhaps. But you're gonna have to bring points. So that's, let's just say it's three points times $1,400. You can do the math on that. And you have to bring that when you buy the property and your interest rate, let's just say it's 12%. So this, they have hard money lenders are very expensive. You end up, usually what we like to say, you end up spending 25 to 30% of your profit on the hard money lender on any flip. And the last thing is their terms, non-negotiable, non-negotiable. If you screw up, you miss a payment, they're coming after you. If you go over the six months or the nine months, they are going to start repossessing the property, possibly doing a foreclosure, or they want you to have a very, very hefty extension fee. I have seen extension fees up upwards of $5,000 because don't forget, at the when that six months is over, you have to extend the loan and you have to make your, your monthly payment. So, <coughs> so you've got two things hitting you at the end of that loan. And don't screw up because they'll come after you. I have actually seen a hard money lender require a borrower to sign the house back over to them at closing when the borrower bought the house. So all they had to do was go down there and record their new deed. They're the new owners, the borrowers out of all the time and money of their own money that they put into it. So be careful when you're using hard money. Great for doing business, but I only want to see you get into one, one, maybe two of these at once. Because if you got $2,500, $3,000 going out every month on money, the cost of the money, can really, really catch up with you fast, especially when you're spending 10, 20, $30,000 on a renovation. All right, my favorite, what I love, private money. And I didn't even know this existed. This is the world that exists. And let me show you real quick. I literally just closed a deal. I'll show you that in a little while. There is a world that exists outside of the conventional thinking where you can make your own terms. And I'm gonna cover that real quick. All right. Private money, not only is it asset based, but it is personality based. Remember at the beginning of our video where I said we need to be engaged in life. You meet 
private lenders by being engaged with people. All of my private lenders are either friends and family or an associate of a friend or a family member. So they're personality based. What does that mean? They're going to lend you, they are going to lend you money based on your professionalism and how you put deals together. Yes, they are secured. So if you die or the deal gets screwed up, they get to liquidate the asset and get their money back. But they're not interested, they're not interested like these guys here in liquidating assets. All they want is their money back and their ROI. So they're personality based. You have to be engaged with people in order for them to lend you money. So get off those phones, start talking to people. Oh, something I missed here. Oh, wow. Let me rewind. I missed one on hard money. A good thing about hard money is you have something we call second eyes opinion. And if you're new out there, I recommend using hard money because the hard money lender is a professional and he's going to look at your deal and he's going to be the second eyes to look at your deal to make sure it's a good deal. So you don't go out there and screw it all up. Transversely, if you're looking at, if you're using private money, there is no second eyes opinion. So you have to be a professional. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know how the numbers work, how to manage contractors, how to acquire real estate properly at the right price. So there is no second eyes opinion when it comes to private money. You are the second eyes. Why it's why I kind of don't recommend newbies to use private money and I kind of like them to stick over to hard money. Okay. No down payment. Private money, who cares about a down payment? Your private lender isn't even gonna know whether you're bringing a down payment or not. They're gonna bring in the money, fund you for the deal, and that's it. You know, it's not like they necessarily are gonna wanna see your HUD or how much are you putting in the deal. They're gonna fund whatever you agree to them and they're gonna finance that at closing. No monthly payments. We do no payment loans. All of the, we borrow $100,000 or $50,000 or what have you, and we close on the deal in January. When we sell the property is when we pay all of our interest. So we have no payment loans. The interest accrues while we hold on to the property. Every month it goes up. So when we sell the property, we just take the interest off the top. We set it, we stack it onto the amount that we borrowed and pay the lender back at closing. So we've got no monthly outgo, which allows us to do multiple, multiple deals as opposed to just doing one deal with the hard money guy. No points. What are points? Private lenders don't really care about points. They're, all they really want is their return on their investment. So they don't even really care about points. You don't even, we don't pay points in private money. Reasonable interest. Right now we're paying anywhere between seven to 9%. There was a time where the market was booming years ago. We were paying 10 to 12%. The market and the profit margins have gone down. So everybody has had to adjust their, I guess, profit barometer accordingly. So we're paying anywhere from seven to nine percent. We're over here on high on hard money. You're going to pay anywhere from ten to twelve, up to fifteen, and upwards of fifteen percent. Re, uh, reasonable interest. So I call that a reasonable seven to nine percent is a reasonable interest rate, especially when you're getting one to three percent in a bank somewhere. Say you got two hundred thousand sitting in a bank CD somewhere. All right, and the terms are negotiable. If you screw up, I've been there. I screwed up deals several times. A lot of deals done a lot of good deals too. But if you screw up on the deal and you, you're, you hold the house longer than you want it to, or you didn't sell it for what you thought you'd sell it for, what's going to happen here when the hard money lender, when you, tell, when you tell the hard money guy, hey, I thought I was going to sell the house for 200, but I can only get 185. Would you mind if I cut some of the interest off and just paid you five months interest instead of 12 months interest? These guys, they don't care about that. Over here, terms, I've done it several times. I've held a house, I remember one time I held a house for 14 months. I was making no money. So I called my private people, I said, listen, I know I owe you 8,000 in interest. Would you mind if I could pay you five? No problem, no problem. People will work with you as long as you're sincere, you've got integrity and you're honest. Sincerity, integrity, and you're honest. If you tell them the situation, hey, I couldn't do the, I, I know I promised you X, but I can only give you Y. Would that be okay? I guarantee you people are more willing to work with you as long as you are putting forth an effort to do the right thing. So I held that house for 12 months. I mean, no, 14 months. I called up my lenders. I said, listen guys, would you mind taking a discount on your, only on your interest, not on the principal that you loaned me? And they said, fine, no problem. So everybody was happy. I walked away. 
I got the principal back. I was able to use that principal on another house. So terms are negotiable. If you go over the six month or the nine month, no problem. Hey, I'm gonna hold the money, call up your lenders. I'm gonna hold the money a few months longer. Would that be okay? It's more interest for them anyway, right? All right, so now you get a small glimpse, a little picture of what goes on in the world of real estate investors. And I want you to kind of migrate from this side over to private money as soon as you can. You're starting out, stay on hard money because you got that second eyes opinion. They're gonna look at your deal. Private money, come on over guys. There's a world out there where real estate is done the right way. All right, so there's a wrong way and the right way and I want you to be over here on the right way. All right, so at the end, guys, subscribe to my channel. We're trying to get 10,000 subs. By the end of the month, I believe, my belief is that we bring positive and informative information to our community and to the internet, positive real estate investing information. And I wanna hopefully share with you, put your comments down if we, and let us know what we're doing or what topics you'd like for us to cover. Chris Haskins, I'll see you soon.